Um, so when I was a junior in high school, Bill Kittrell asked uh, the whole church to fast, and so I decided to fast too, just because more avoiding, but I don't think you're Christian talk, and um, like during that afternoon, I actually prayed for the first time in my life, and like I just saw all my sin, and you know, it was just clear to me I wouldn't go to heaven because I played Christian, like I don't get into heaven, I don't get saved because my family's saved, like that's not, I needed to rely on Christ for my salvation, and it wasn't anything I could do, it wasn't any will I could pull over anyone's eyes, like I just couldn't deceive myself anymore, and God was like, you're not saved, you're going straight to hell, and then I just cried out to him, and um, he saved me. Because the Bible says you need to get baptized. And so I didn't be obedient, but I was sort of nervous and sort of didn't really want to do it. And then just like getting baptized, I felt super close to God and super close to the people around me. And it was so cool to be baptized by my brother. Her getting baptized is just like a reminder of the change that she's gone through. Um, and like uh, that she would want to do that, um, I think it was really cool. And that I got to baptize her um, was. Uh, just, I think, awesome because um, she's been so, such a big part like of my life and my spiritual walk like these past, I guess, three or four years since she's been a Christian and encouraging me. And so, like, being able to baptize her and, uh, and like, uh, just, like, pray over her um, was, I, I, it was awesome. Really living as a people pleaser and as a um, self-righteous child. <laughs> Um, thinking that God would be pleased with me because I was obedient and to my parents and that I did well in school and um, I just had pride in my heart when I was like in elementary school um, I remember that and I also remember just um, having a very sober awareness that um, at some point um, that I just needed a savior that my sin was separating me from God and that I couldn't do anything um, to be righteous before him on my own. So um, I think sometime around then, around end of fifth grade, um, that I really put my faith, faith and trust in Christ um, and believed for the first time that he um, took the punishment for my sin on the cross and that he gave me his righteousness and that was the only thing I could depend on before God. I mean, I heard Mike preach and basically he just shared the gospel and was preaching from scripture and laying out just God's plan of salvation for the world. And I was, I mean, it was encouraging to me as a believer just to remember, just to be, have that preached to me just as it is most of the time. <laughs> um, and so I think I was kind of like, a little bit emotionally vulnerable at the time, just having starting to miss my family a little bit and um, excited, um, but also just a little bit overwhelmed just with everything new. Um, so it was just sweet. I feel like the Lord used that message and even the worship songs, which a lot of them were some of my favorite songs. And so it was just a sweet time of God like comforting me and reminding me of his faithfulness and um, that he would um, bring me to, you know, unite me with believers in a place. And so I, VSU was the first campus ministry that I visited, and I visited another one that I was really impressed with as well. Just the teaching was very um, solid from scripture, um, evangelistic, and um, the songs were great, but no one talked to me afterwards. So really, that was a huge factor that my roommate and I, we literally didn't know anyone at VFC, and afterwards we couldn't get away for probably like an hour. Okay, that relationships in VFC have been awesome, I think. Uh, especially this past year, I've really gotten to know a lot of people that I didn't know at all, and um, were a lot different, and I just, it's cool getting to know people that think differently and are learning different things and struggle with different things and excel in different ways, and so I feel like just having, being question like I get challenged on things or like how's this going and just having people faithfully follow up on stuff and ask like how's this going or asking hard questions and not just being content with like 
how are you doing? Great. Oh, okay. Like, they're never like that. It's always like, no, well, how, why are you great? What's making it great? And like really getting in there and trying to kind of get beneath the surface and find out because they really care about you. They care about your heart and what's going on in your walk with God. And so what makes you joyful? Why are you, why is it a good day? Jeremy Overbay always asks that. He always says, well, so why is it a good day? And then I have to think about it. And I'm like, wow. And so just asking real questions and really trying to know you and care for your soul, I think. I think hearing the teaching at VFC has made me more hungry for the Word of God, too. Like, long story short, I really love that also. And just seeing the connections between, like, the Old and the New Testament. And um, I think really knowing God biblically, not just saying, like, oh, this is... Um, because it's the whole Word of God. It's not just the four Gospels. Like, it's all-encompassing. And so I think seeing, like, this is God, you know, in knowing all the different... Trying to, like, learn the different aspects of His character and who He reveals Himself to be. So I think that it goes deeper than just, like, the surfacey message. But it's... So I feel like every message you hear, it's always directed back to the Gospel, but you're hearing it through different examples. It's not just using the one text. It takes, look, this is the whole Bible, and this is how it points back to Jesus. This is how it points back to the Gospel. And so that makes me think, oh man, like I want to read the Old Testament. I want to see what the Bible has to say and make those connections myself. How does that point back to Jesus? And just when he's saying like the whole story is whispering the name of Jesus Christ, like how does Leviticus relate back to Jesus Christ? And just trying to make the connections, it makes me want to read more and seek out what God's saying about himself. And uh, I just walk in the door um, at Cornerstone and was just blown away by it. Uh, just the genuineness, if that's a word, that you could, uh, uh, that I picked up from other people, you know, it's like, they really, like, they were real, like, hey, how you doing, and like, not just, how you doing, see it, but like, can't, like, asking him, hey, what's your name, getting to you know you, just like, um, really like, they cared for it, cared for me, and I was like, this is different, and then the message, um, you know, I don't remember exactly what it was, but I really preached the gospel, uh, and, uh, I think just afterwards, I kind of realized, you know, this church, I think it was just immediately, like, this is the church I want to come to, and this is the one I want to be a part of. Uh, a big change, I mean, um, while I think I was a Christian at the time um, that I came, I think a big change is just my appreciation for the gospel. You know, I'd heard it countless times growing up and, um, and understood it and um, believed it, um, but didn't have... A passion for it, I guess, um, and just um, being around Cornerstone, being around the FC in particular, um, it just, it, I was able to pick up, you know, like this is a big deal, you know, this is a, uh, the gospel is important, and so um, I think I just, uh, I've grown a love for uh, <laughs> just sharing the gospel and just like, you know, this is a big part of my life. I want to spread it. You know, I want to share it with other people. Um, even people who are Christians, you know, I want to, uh, you know, talk to them and reach out with them and say, hey, man, like, you say you're Christian, live like it, you know? And I think, um, I think because I was one of those people, I think, you know, I did, it, I was a Christian, but it, it wasn't, you know, it didn't consume my life. Whereas you know, I think if we believe in the gospel, it has to change your life and it has to, um, have an outward display and so I mean just looking at my life and just seeing my priorities change over the past couple of years my passion um, just to you know read the word or just to spend time with the Lord in prayer um, you know that didn't exist um, before VFC and Cornerstone so um, that's the biggest change I think that I've seen is just that passion uh, to seek the Lord and to seek his truth and his word Thank you.